The iPad OS 15 is here and it comes with a lot of great features. In this video, I'm going to walk you guys through all those features. Hi guys, this is Big Phil and welcome back to another video. This time, I'm going to be walking you guys through all the newest features for the iPad OS 15. And remember guys, this is not the official version. This is the public beta and I'll install it on my 2018 iPad Pro so I can show y'all all the newest features that will be coming for the official iPad OS. We don't know when, probably next month or in two months time. I'm so excited. So I decided to install it on my 2018 iPad Pro. In this video, we're going to go through all those features, everything in this video. But if you want to install the public beta, I'm going to drop the link of it in the description below so you can check it out and know what are the procedure on how to install it. And also remember, if you're installing it, you have to first of all back up all your important files, important information, videos, photos, everything from your iPad Pro because a public beta my heart is not stable you might there might be a lot of bugs a lot of hiccups so if you want to go back to the ios 14 or the ipad OS 14 it's easy so when you back up everything you can get everything back into your ipad pro so we don't waste too much time let's check out all those features i'm going to use the magic mouse to to navigate through the ipad pro while i'm showing you guys all the newest features but unfortunately there is no new features for the magic mouse to compatible on the iPad Pro. It's still got the same drawbacks like whenever you turn it off and you turn it on, you have to manually reconnect it back to your iPad Pro. It's still got the same issue. So there's no new features when it comes to mouse support. Now let's move on to the most important thing, which is right here, widgets. Widget has gotten much better with the iPad OS 15. Like right now, you can put it on any part of the screen. Like you can move it any way you want to put it on the screen. Unlike before or unlike on the iPad OS 14, everything was all on the same section right here on the corner. But now you can put it anywhere. I mean, if you can even put a widget on the second page. <laughs> That's crazy. This was not available with the iPad OS 14. But now you can move it anywhere. And you can resize it. You can put it on the bottom, in the middle, on the top, wherever you want to put it. But for me, I like to have mine, I like to have all my widgets right on the top, like right like this. Put everything right here. Yeah, I just love it to be like this. You tap down. And if you want to access all the other or newest uh, widgets, you tap and hold on the screen. Then it will give you this plus button right on the corner here. You tap on it. Then these are the available widgets that you can choose from. This one right here. These are the samples. Or you can use through the different app. For example, if I click on Spotify, these are the widgets for Spotify right here, which I can just choose one, put on the screen. Or I can go, for example, on the weather. It will give you all the different sizes, small, medium, and large. You can choose it, put it on the screen. So there are a lot of widgets, and it's much customizable right now. You can put it anywhere on the screen, on the first page, on the second page, even right up to the last page is possible. But unlike on the previous iPad OS 14, it was widgets were only possible on the first page and just on the left corner right here. And also app library is now available for the iPad OS 15. Before it was only available for iPhones, but now you can have it on an iPad Pro. Like for example, you scroll right to the last page and that's it right there. Or for the iPad Pro, you can have it here on the corner. It's always right here on the uh, uh, bottom right corner right here. So you can tap on it. When you click, it brings you all the different app library where you can choose from. So which is good. I mean, if you don't want to have a lot of pages on the iPad Pro like me, you see what I have here, like one, two, three, four, that's crazy. You can just group all your apps right here. And every time you want to use it, you simply just click on the bottom right corner. It stays there all the time, which is great. Still on the home screen, there are two new applications. Let's start with the first one, Translate. Translate has been on iPhone since the iOS 14, but for the iPad OS 15, it is now available for the iPad Pro, which is great, I love it. And it translates languages really good. There are some few languages available right now. We've got things like Japanese, Italian, Korean, Russian, Spanish, yeah, this, uh, Chinese, they're all here. And it works really good. You can use your voice, good morning, it translates really fast. It has a dictionary on the bottom where you can search the word, the meaning of the word. It's right all available right here. You can do conversation 
where you have a conversation with two people using different languages it works really good. You can save the conversation in your favorite. So there's a, there are a lot of features when it comes to the translate on the iPad OS. And the second application, which is new, is Magnifier. This is used to control the camera, the camera app. For example, you can capture a photo with it, flashlights, the brightness, you can zoom into the photo, you can change the settings, you can do any, everything from this app right here, which is nice, and you capture the photo. And now, let's talk about multitasking on an iPad Pro. It has gotten so much better. Like right now, when you tap on any application, for example, let's say Safari, it has this three dot on the top right here. There are three, I don't know if you guys can see right on the top corner, top right here, three dots. When you click on it, it gives you these three options. You have a full screen, you have uh, a split screen, and a slide over. So for example, if I tap on the split screen in the middle, now it gives me space, it gives way to all the different apps. I mean, it slides on the corner and allow me to see all the different apps on the main screen. Now, if I want to choose another app to go with the split screen of uh, Safari, I can tap, for example, on YouTube. You see right there, it comes onto a split screen. Right here we have YouTube on one corner and Safari on the other side, which is nice. Then, as you can see, the, uh, the three dots are still available for all the different apps. The two split, screen, uh, split applications have the three dots. If I tap right here, it can give me a full screen where the other one is gone. Or we can still do the same thing. Let's say we still got a Safari right here. Now if I uh, click on the slide over, now one app become full screen and the other slide over. So multitasking has become so much and much easier, especially with this uh, option right here, the three dots when you tap on it, you got things like, and when you're using the Safari browser, on the bottom, you have all the different windows that you have open, different websites. For example, there's YouTube there. There is another YouTube right here. There is a weather app. So whenever you click on it, it gives you everything. As you can see right here, it takes you to the page that you've been working on, just like this. And you can click on more, tap on new windows. And let's say Apple. And now as you can see, it's gone. But if I wanted to come back, I simply tap on the three dots again and everything is still on the bottom. YouTube, YouTube, the weather, and Apple. So everything is right here. Really nice. There is also app switcher, which is also known as app pairing. So what you simply do is you swipe from the bottom and stop right in the middle. Then you can pair two apps together. For example, if I can drag Safari and pair it with the Note app, or I can drag the Translate and pair it with the Gmail. As you can see right here, I can drag uh, the tapes and pair it with the Apple Store. Now I have a lot of apps that are paired together. And whenever I want to use them, I simply drag again, stop in the middle, click right here. It brings two apps at the same time. So multitasking has gotten so much better, man. This is really good. So, and also you can also do the slide over. As you can see, I have one slide over right here. So I can take the Note app away from the pairing and bring it and drop it as a slide over. The same thing with the Safari. Bring it right here and drop it as a slide over. And I can see all the different slide over right here. And whenever I want to work on two apps at the same time, I simply drag from the bottom, stop in the middle. It gives me all the different pairing app, all the apps that have been paired together. Then if I want to work on Safari and translate, I click right there. It gives me a split screen right there, so fast and easy. I can also get the slide over right on the corner. This is much better than on the iPad OS 14. Amazing, man. And if you've been working on two applications on a split screen like this, then you want to extend one of the application to take a full screen. Like for example, if I want the YouTube to be on the full screen, I can also use my finger and swipe from top to bottom on the Safari, it's gone. Then now I can choose another or I can simply tap on YouTube, it takes the full screen. And still about multitasking, there is now Quick Note. With Quick Note, you can use the Apple Pencil and you drag from the bottom right corner, just like this, it bring up a Quick Note, a little page where you can jot down important things like numbers, emails, uh, website. It's just so good. And when you're done writing down, you tap on done, it's gone. Right there. You can even use it when you're doing something else. Let's say I'm in 
Safari. I'm doing something on Safari. I want to jot down an important email. I just simply drag from bottom right corner and it brings up a little page. I can write it down, type on darn, and it's gone. But if you drag it from the bottom left, it's instantly going to take a screenshot. So you must do it on the bottom right corner right here. Bring up, and you can move it around. That's a good thing. You can move it around, put it wherever you want to put it, right here on the bottom. You jot down, tap on done. That's it. And you can have many pages on a quick note. For example, if I'm done writing on this page, it's full. I simply tap on this little icon right here. It brings out another page. I write on it, it's full. I tap on this icon, bring another one. Tap on this icon, more pages. And if you want to swipe through all those pages, use your finger, you swipe to see all the different pages. So these are the different pages that have been used, the first one, the second one, which is really nice. So the quick note comes in a little windows where the space is not much, but you can choose more pages to write on, which is great. The next set of new features are about FaceTime. FaceTime has gained so much improvement on the iPod OS 15, like a lot of new features. The first is the fact that on FaceTime, you can now share a TV show or a movie with friends. Let's say I'm, I have a bunch of friends who are doing the first time, I can share a movie or I can share a TV show with all those friends. You can also share music or album with your friends and above all, you can share a screen. Like if, for example, I find something on the website, I can share it with my friends on FaceTime. Another new feature with FaceTime is what Apple calls Spatial Audio which lets uh, the voice or the sound comes from the direction where the person image is. Let's take for example that I'm doing a FaceTime and there are 10 people on the screen. And if I'm talking, the voice or the audio comes from the, the direction where my image is. That is amazing. You can also resize the photo frame of everyone on the screen. So if there are 20 people, I can resize their, their, their frame to make sure everybody can be on the screen so I can see everybody. So you resize their, their photo frames. And there is also portrait mode, which the camera focus on you and blur out everything in the background. Even the noise from the background is blurred out. This is really good, especially if you're in an environment where it's so noisy or a place where there are so many people and you want the video call to focus on you. Portrait mode is the best. And above all, there is now FaceTime link, which means you can share FaceTime link to many people, especially people that has Android phones or Windows. The next set of features are about Safari. Safari has gained some improvement with the iPad OS 15. Now when you get in, the streamlined tab bar on the top now takes the color of the site or the website that you're browsing on. So for example, right now I'm on uh, apple.com. The color is gray and black. If I go on YouTube, for example, on YouTube, it's going to be red. So it takes the color. It's now much customizable. It looks better. And when you slide up, it gives you a full screen. Another uh, feature with the Safari is the fact that now you can use a voice to search a website. For example, let me, let's look for a new website, a new tab. And you type on this little microphone icon right here, apple.com. And that's it. Or let's get to another tab microphone youtube.com that's it and at the top there are many tabs that shows you all the different websites they are working on for example if i click on this one it takes me back to apple.com click on this one it takes me back to apple.com if i click on this one it takes me to youtube.com and if i click on this one it takes me to facebook.com so all the different tabs are right here on the top which they can disappear to give you a full screen that is nice also, another thing that's new with Safari is now there is a little icon right here, which when you tap on it, it gives you a lot of features like the different tabs that you're working on, all the different websites that you're working on are all right here. It can also take you to private, the, pri the private website that you have, which you can put a password on it to keep it private. You have the bookmark, it's right here. You have the reading list and history, the things that you've been browsing on. So everything is right here. And if you don't want it anymore, you click again, it's gone. It gives you a full screen. And to customize each type of website, you click on these three dots right here, and it brings you a bunch of options like copy, text size, which you can change the size of the text of the website, privacy report. And when you scroll right down, you have my favorite, hide toolbar. When you click on it, 
as you can see, all the different uh, tabs with website are disappeared, gone. And if you want to bring it back, you bring your mouse up, it appears. When you take it out, it's gone. Or if you don't have a mouse, you can use your finger. You tap right there, it comes back. That's right there. And there are also a bunch of other options, like uh, request a mobile website, which I don't know if I'm going to use it, uh, website settings to change everything. So there are a bunch of uh, settings or customization on Safari based on the iPad OS 15. <laughs> and the next set of features is about live text. Live text is a way in which you can unlock useful and rich information from an image. So it deals with images. Now let's get into the photo, the photo app. This is an image of me. And right there, as you can see, there are text on it. So what I can do is I can use my finger, Apple Pencil, or a mouse, and I highlight the text. Then options. You can copy it, select everything, look up, which is going to search, translate, or share. Wow, this is amazing. This is an image which, I mean, I've edited this image like two times, but I can still copy text from it. I can search anything from it. This is a game changer when it comes to images. This is very nice. And still in the photo app, under media types, there is now raw. The raw format, it gives you all the different photos that are still in the raw format. Like right here, these are all the photos I took with my Sony A7 Mark III camera. And these photos are still in raw format. And the good thing is you can edit these photos with the built-in editing app in RAW. That is nice. So as like this photo right here, I can edit anything. I can do contrast, I can change the highlight, the shadow, everything. I can do all the editing right here. Then when I'm done or when I save the photo, it goes back under the RAW format, which means the photos still stay RAW. So even after the editing, the photo remains RAW. Unlike on the iPad OS 14, when you edit a RAW photo, it changed from RAW to JPEX. But now, with this format, you can edit RAW photos and it remains RAW. And the next set of features are about focus. Focus is a way in which Apple is trying to make people to spend less time on their devices or to assist people in do not disturb. But this is a simple do not disturb. Now, to access focus, you can use it on the, the, the control center. You tap right here and right here, focus. When you tap on it, it gives you different mode. You have do not disturb, which means you receive no notification from nobody. But you can also use personal. And when you tap on personal, it takes you to the screen where you can personalize or you can choose the people that you can receive notification from. Now, let's say if it's like 10 p.m. in the night, and I don't want to receive notification from anybody, but I want to receive notification from my wife. I can use her name or put her name here, add it, choose her name, and add it there right there. So whenever it's 10 p.m. in the night, I can receive notification from her only, but everybody else, nothing. Now, you can also use work. And work is the same thing. Let's say I click on work. It takes me again to this page where I can personalize and choose the people that way I want to receive notification from. I can choose like few colleagues. I can choose an employer. And from 10 p.m. in the night or 11 p.m., those are the only people where I can receive notification from. Anybody else? Nothing. So focus, especially personal and work, is like a simplified version of do not disturb. But if you choose do not disturb, no notification from anybody, and you can customize the time. The notification panel or notification windows looks different. It looks better now. As you can see right here, the photos or the icons of where the notification is coming from appears right on the corner and it looks much bigger and brighter. And the next set of features is with the map, the Apple map. The Apple map has been improved, has been updated. There's a lot of new features. It looks much better now. There's tons of details. Like if you scroll in, if you keep zooming, there's just so much details in the map right now. It's much better than on the previous version. So when you keep zooming, especially when you have a good internet connection, there is so much details and you can see things in 3D, which is really nice. You can see the roads, buildings, uh, bridges, the rivers, all in 3D, which looks better. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is Memoji. 
there are a lot of customization with Memoji right now. So let's say, for example, we look for new and let me edit this one. Click right here, edit. Now, as you can see, it has a lot of different hair types. For example, let's go to hair types. There's so many different types of hair right here, different kind of hair types is right here. Then there is also clothing. A lot of different types of clothing, traditional clothing, clothing based on different culture. They're all right here. As you can see, all these different types of clothing, they are here. And that's all about this video, guys. The iPad World's 15 on the iPad Pro. Let me know down in the comment section, what are some of the most important features on your opinion? Which one are you more excited about? And please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and turn on notification for more videos, more great videos coming up on Big Field TV. Until then, see you into the next one. Peace.